It's Thursday, December 2, and I'm welcome to your Barbados Today News Update. The National Union of Public Workers has thrown out an appeal lodged by former President Akani McDowell against his expulsion as a member. Following a second meeting summoned yesterday to deal with the matter, Acting General Secretary of the NUPW Richard Green said that neither McDowell nor anyone representing him turned up for a special meeting of the general membership called to hear the matter. In immediate response, McDowell disclosed that he will be taking the matter to the High Court for a final resolution. Let me remind the union members and the public that the NUPW called the incorrect meeting on the 24th of November and at that time indicated that the meeting was terminated. We only received notice of the new meeting late Monday morning on the 29th of November for a meeting to be held on Wednesday, today, 1st of December. I contacted the General Secretary on Monday and indicated that I would not be available to attend the meeting since my legal counsel would not be available for the meeting. My counsel then wrote to the General Secretary and indicated that one, the members of the NUPW were for the first time only on Monday advised of the reconvened meeting. Two, given the manner in which the meeting was concluded, we did not have adequate notice of the reconvened hearing, particularly given that the date of the publication of the notice and the date of the hearing were separated by a public holiday. And three, legal counsel was unavailable to attend the meeting because of previously arranged engagements. Given all of these factors, we requested that the meeting be reconvened at a later date. It is unfortunate but unsurprising that this has been the position taken by the NUPW. I have yet been afforded my right to appeal, which has again been denied by the very institution tasked with upholding workers' rights. We will now head back to the court to have this matter finally put to rest. The successful and incident-free staging of three open-air mass events during independent celebrations may be used as a yardstick for future undertakings on a similar scale in the prevailing COVID-19 environment. Head of the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit, Ronald Chapman, revealed on Wednesday that consideration for permitting similar productions are being explored. Those considerations are pretty advanced. However, I, we, as I said, they're pretty advanced, but we, the public will be hearing more about that in um, probably pretty soon mm -hmm. if um, if the recommendations are, are approved. The COVID-19 pandemic has dealt a blow to the significant gains made by women in the workforce. Word of this from Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Marsha Cado. Speaking at a Women and Trade in the Americas event yesterday, she said while men's unemployment was consistently higher than women over all four quarters of 2019, that changed with the collapse of tourism at the start of the pandemic. Cattle says the number of jobless women is twice that of unemployed men, though there was some change in Barbados. We saw this overwhelming um, kind of overrepresentation of women in retail and in hospitality, food and beverage, and across hospitality sectors, hotels and so on, um, that were during the worst parts of the pandemic submitting claims for unemployment um, at a two to one ratio compared with men. Um, but there's something interesting that was happening in Barbados uh, when we look at the, at the unemployment numbers. In 2019, across the four quarters for which we have the continuous labor force survey, male unemployment was higher than female unemployment in all four quarters pre-pandemic. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy to share, share the data so you can look at it more closely. I don't wanna to spend too much time going into the numbers, but that's what we saw. Um, however, over the last three quarters, that trend has fully reversed. That trend has fully reversed as a result of the pandemic. Um, so we, we now have, and I'm not saying that we wanted to have a situation of male overrepresentation um, in terms of unemployment, but, but, but the fact is that we now have this emerging, this new issue of, of higher women's unemployment um, and, and, and what that means for the policies that we need to introduce. She also disclosed that women's economic participation across the region is generally lower than men. She lamented the fact that even though women are more highly educated than men, it was not reflected in their paychecks. There's a lot that is said about, you know, levels of enrollment at the University of the West Indies, how many women um, are 
graduating from universities in the region. Um, and this is used as kind of a benchmark to suggest that the Caribbean does not have a gender equality problem. What we know though, is that we do have higher levels of educational attainment um, across levels, including tertiary um, by women com as compared with men. But when we look at what's happening in the labor force, we still see a rigidity uh, in terms of the trends that lead to the fact that there remains a gender wage gap. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings on the heels of Barbados' transition to a republic, there are calls in Jamaica for that country to sever ties with Britain. Vashan Brown of Television Jamaica reports. Dr. Maziki Tame is a senior lecturer in the Institute of Gender and Development Studies at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. Some years ago, I remember, I think some royal was visiting Jamaica and someone had spray painted on the, the, um, the walls, the gate to Mona. Yui, Mona, Nani Afewikri, Queen. And I think that that expressed so much of the contradiction of saying that you're independent. And the Queen that represents a history of colonialism, a history in which people of African descent were working to profit Europe with no compensation for themselves. That independence you choose to maintain this connection, which though now it's largely symbolic, still has significance in terms of that process of decolonization, which we have learned um, is not an immediate process. For literary and cultural studies lecturer in the Institute of Caribbean Studies at the University of the West Indies Mona Campus, Dr. Lisa Tomlinson, it is time for Jamaica to make the move. It's quite silly, ridiculous that we would still have the queen as state of head or head of state, excuse me, it leaves behind our colonial past. And our colonial past, of course, we know through colonialism and the legacy of, of slavery and also that connection that we've had to England. So it removes, it takes away, and it's a step towards that. Part of the challenge, Dr. Tame argues, is that Jamaicans are not preoccupied with whether the head of state is the queen or somebody else. On the international scene, on World Is Day yesterday, officials said the fight is not over, and while there has been progress, the situation is still very difficult, especially during the current pandemic. Forty years have passed since the first cases of AIDS were discovered. Today, on World AIDS Day, the battle against the disease continues. Even if some progress has been made, the fight isn't over yet. The situation is still very difficult, especially when facing down the COVID pandemic, that's engulfed our lives for the past two years. We've seen that uh, testing for HIV has gone down. A recent study showed that approximately 22% reduction in the amount of testing that's being do done, as well as prevention and mother-to-child transmission options to reduce the transmission to a child has been affected. We've also seen that uh, COVID itself affects people living with HIV and that they're at an increased risk for, for severe disease and death. Right now, there are nearly 38 million people living with HIV in the world, mainly in Africa and Asia, 28 million of those being on antiretrovirals. Last year, nearly 700,000 AIDS-related deaths were documented. 
to put an end to HIV as a public health threat. Experts are saying that much more public funding will be needed now and in the future. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.